One of our top news stories this morning, it's about local businesses that are not only bouncing back right now, they're actually looking at a future that could be brighter than what they were seeing before the pandemic hit. Yep, that's true for some restaurants, especially the ones that expanded their outdoor seating. Now they can serve customers inside and outside, giving them more space than they had pre-pandemic. A PBOT program gets a lot of the credit, the healthy business permit, allows restaurants to seat diners in parking spots right there along the curb or on side streets that have been closed to accommodate customers. We talked to the manager at McPete's Portland Pub who says it changed their business for the better. The neighborhood has come out in full force. They're constantly thanking us for being here and giving them a, a space to feel comfortable to eat and drink and be merry. PBOT says it is thrilled with the response to the healthy business program and it's exploring how to make it sustainable moving forward. The current permits will expire November 1st. Well, Governor Kate Brown said Oregon is just 2% away from its goal of getting 70% of the state vaccinated, but 2% is 71,000 people. And this also comes amid concerns about rising COVID cases among African Americans. Numbers from Multnomah County Health between April 1st and the end of May show African Americans were twice as likely to test positive. They were 80% more likely to be hospitalized than white people. The data also shows vaccination rates for people of African descent are the second lowest in the state with about 37% with one dose. Portland nonprofit Self Enhancement Inc. is working to improve those numbers with vaccine clinics and testing sites. It makes me immediately think about my immediate family, right? Like I think about my mother, I think about my grandmother, I think about my grandfather, I think about my brother, I think about so many people that, that look like me that might, that might be their reality. Culturally, where would they go? We at SEI know that a lot of people call us for information. That's why we've done these events, because culturally they're going to call us. That's why SEI is planning more vaccine events for this summer. Let's take a look at some other local headlines we're tracking this morning. The first is a sad one out of Clark County. A head on crash Monday afternoon killed a teenage girl. She was in a car with three other teenagers when a truck came into their lane and hit them on SR 503. Washington State Police said the three teens who survived in this crash were rushed to the hospital. Right now, we don't know the extent of their injuries. The driver of the truck, David Zarb, now faces vehicular homicide and assault charges. Police say drugs or alcohol were a factor. Multnomah County District Attorney Mike Schmidt says the man who tried to light a Portland police building on fire will spend five years in prison. This is video from the night that fire was lit back in June of last year. Gavon Streeter Hillerick was seen lighting a large dumpster on fire outside the North Precinct building on MLK in Killingsworth. 19 officers were inside the building when Streeter Hillerick tried to light it on fire. With no protection in place, renters are scrambling before Oregon's eviction moratorium expires at the end of the month. There are state programs to help with rental assistance, but nonprofits and city agencies tasked with managing applications say they won't have time to process all of them by June 30th. Lawmakers in Salem are trying to ease the growing fears. So a bill in the Oregon House would protect renters from eviction for 60 days after they apply for help. But again, the deadline is approaching fast now and there's just two weeks left in the legislative session. And those are some of our Tuesday morning headlines. Now to the latest on Portland's ongoing protests. They have been pretty quiet lately, but there's still action happening behind the scenes. KGW's Dan Haggerty looked at the stark contrast compared to a year ago. Yeah, it's a lot different from this time last year when we were what, talking about protests and riots nightly. But just because things have settled down in the streets doesn't mean that the courts are taking a break from prosecuting people, though the pandemic has slowed things down pretty significantly there as well. Let's take a look at the numbers, shall we? To date, 1,108 arrests stemming from crimes committed at protests have been referred to the Multnomah County District Attorney. 891 of those have been rejected. Remember, the DA is not prosecuting a lot of lower level protest defenses, and that makes up a lot of those rejected cases, but they are prosecuting 194 protest related cases. 28 cases are pending. That means the DA's office hasn't decided whether or not to pursue charges. And lastly, a grand total of nine cases have been resolved. That means only nine people have been convicted of or pleaded guilty to the charges against them. 
A few weeks ago, this number was six, so we have seen some progress since then. But I know what you're thinking. Nine cases, nine out of more than a thousand arrests. Yeah, well, the reason for that, according to the DA's office anyhow, is that they have a big backlog of cases due to the pandemic, shutting down parts of the court system. Now, of those nine resolved cases, I do want to look at one that just came down. That's pretty notable because of both the crime and the punishment. In June 2020, a man named Gavon Streeter Hillerich started a fire at Portland Police Bureau's North Precinct during a protest. He lit a fire in a dumpster and then pushed that dumpster against the plywood covering the windows of the building. There were 19 people inside at the time. None of them got hurt. Streeter Hillerich pleaded guilty to first degree arson and he just got sentenced to five years in prison. That is way longer than any punishment that we have seen so far. The DA's office says it's because he also pleaded guilty to some other crimes not related to that arson case. So the judge handed down a sentence for all of those charges together. We'll keep tabs and continue to do so on other protest related sentences and keep you updated. All right, that was Dan Haggerty for us. Thank you. In November, voters in Multnomah County passed a measure to pay for preschool for all families who can't afford it. The money will come from a one and a half percent tax on those making over 125,000 a year or 200 grand per couple. But seven months after it passed, we found the program off to a slow start. The first kids to benefit won't be covered until next fall, and it's a small group. It could be nearly a decade before all preschoolers are covered. Some providers say they love the idea, but they want more answers from the county. I believe in the overall mission of it of, um, for sure, and I think that it will be a really good thing for our city. It's just a matter of like working on all the logistics. We looked into how much Multnomah County is bringing in from that new tax and when it started, where the money's going and the challenges of implementing the program. You can check out the full story on our KGW YouTube page. Well, the U.S. Olympic track and field trials are set to begin at Hayward Field in Eugene this Friday. Yeah, that's right. The best track and field athletes in the country will be there to compete for spots on the Olympic team. Of course, everything was pushed back a year because of the pandemic, but those extra 12 months did give the University of Oregon time to make some major upgrades to the venue. The athletes say they're excited about competing at the revamped Hayward Field. Even if it's full or not, I feel like just the atmosphere of like having like the, the stadium kind of fully surrounded you and stuff like that, I think is going to play a big effect. And I know it's not the historic Hayward Field, but it's, it's definitely, it's, it's really cool. It's going to be special. Again, you can see the action starting this weekend through June 27th. The events can be seen right here on NBC and on the NBC Sports Network. And less than a week before the Olympic trials, local distance runner Shelby Houlihan has received a four year ban and won't compete. Back in December, Houlihan tested positive for the banned steroid Nandrolone. In an Instagram post, she tried to explain how that happened. She said she believes the positive result came from a pork burrito that she ate the night before the test. According to her post, some pigs produce this substance naturally in very high amounts. However, they're not buying that because that appeal was denied. Houlihan, by the way, holds a couple of American records and was considered a medal contender. She lives and trains right here in the Portland area. All right, it's